I'll we here are complaining about our data charges and how bad our internet signal is. There are other places in the world where people like Elon Musk are talking about building underground highways under cities and sending rockets into space so people can live on Mars. Places like Amazon now have robots that do the work that people used to do. <laughs> Hey guys, so this video is for lockdown day seven. Now, I know that I was supposed to make this video yesterday already, but work got really hectic, so I didn't have the time to actually sit down and put the video together. Um, I was actually up until about 3 a.m. in the morning working on uh, finishing a marketing plan uh, for the organization. So far, I've gotten some very good feedback on that, and there's also been some other very good news that's come through. So keeping my fingers crossed for those things, uh, especially considering the current situation that we're going through with the virus. Now, uh, while we're speaking about news, I did an article this morning and it was sent to me over WhatsApp. It's a BBC article, headline is, South Africa's ruthlessly efficient fight against coronavirus. And this is what, what it says. It says, one week into South Africa's nationwide lockdown to prevent the spread of coronavirus. And it is attempting, dangerously attempting, to breathe a sigh of relief. Now, so far, more than 47,000 people have been tested. 67 mobile testing units have been organized. Soon, the country will be able to test about 30,000 people every day. Uh, so far, there's been five deaths from the coronavirus that's confirmed, and about 1,400 have tested positive for the coronavirus. So firstly, again, my du'as, my prayers go out to the families of those who have lost loved ones uh, because of this uh, virus. Um, and for anybody else that's lost a loved one, I know it's always a very difficult thing. I lost my grandmother a couple of years ago and um, told today it's still a very sensitive issue. So my prayers and my du'as go out to you. It says here, uh, South Africa seems to have acted faster, more efficiently and more ruthlessly than many other countries around the world. It does also speak a bit about the rough side of how the lockdown has been handled. It says here that the police and the army have at times acted with thuggish abandon in the attempts to enforce this lockdown. Uh, talking about humiliating, beating, and even shooting civilians um, on the streets of uh, Joburg and elsewhere. So, but what I also do want to speak about regarding the articles, it says that there are you know places in, in there are people in places like Joburg CBD, CBD or like Alexandra where people are still going out, you know, vendors are still going out to try and sell, you know, goods to make some money. And we need to really understand what the, the circumstances are of these people that are going out and breaking this rule. For some of them, it is because they need to make ends meet and they have no other way of doing so. They do not have a salary that's paid to them every month. One of the statements that's made in the, in the, in, in, in the article is that South Africa is one of the most unequal countries in the world. So there also needs to be a sense of consideration or consciousness of where these people are coming from and why they are doing what they are doing. So for some of them, I know that there are others that are just being completely, that are just completely ignoring the rules and just want to go out and do what they want to. I get that there are those people, but there are others also that are just trying to put some bread on the table and they don't know how they're going to do that because they have nothing else. One of the comments that was made there is they say, you know, we're talking about social dist we're talking about social distancing, we're talking about staying indoors and at home. Right? But do we realize, do we understand what that must be like in a township where everybody fears that the that the that the virus could spread rapidly? Can we imagine what isolation and self-quarantine is, is like in a home that's the size of one small room shared by other people with no water and no toilet. And just as the health minister is quoted to say in this in this article, we may just be going through the calm before a very massive storm. Now that brings me down to today's video. Today's video I spoke about in my in my in my Instagram story. I wanted to speak about change and fear. Now, aside from what this, this lockdown is doing, you know, the lockdown is obviously making us very concerned about what's going to happen in our country. Uh, is this lockdown possibly going to be extended? If that's the case, what does that mean for people's jobs? 
Uh, I have friends who already have uh, been retrenched. I have others that are considering taking a retrenchment package. You know, there are self-employed families that I know. I, I know families who own their own businesses that now can't run their business. What are these people going to do if this lockdown gets extended? What's the effect that it's going to have on people's jobs, on the economy, and just a general way forward for our country once we pass through this? This is something we've never experienced before. We've watched things like this on movies countless times, but to actually experience it is a totally different story. So, aside from the, the, the coronavirus and aside from this lockdown, the world is changing rapidly. While we here are complaining about our data charges and how bad our internet signal is, there are other places in the world where people like Elon Musk are talking about building underground highways under cities and sending rockets into space so people can live on Mars. Places like Amazon now have robots that do the work that people used to do. We live in a world where today a teacher who's sitting in Joburg or sitting in Cape Town can be teaching students on another side of the planet that they have never been to where counselors, therapists, can share the information and, and teach large audiences important lessons about what they know and empowering those people with certain skills that they can use to better their lives and better the lives of those that they care for in a manner that was never possible before. It's a lockdown, 21 days. I'm in this place completely by myself. I thought this was going to be very difficult, but to be quite honest with you, it's been a lot easier than I thought because I live in a world where I can communicate with anybody. And so in a world that's changing so rapidly, we need to sit down and ask ourselves, we are all cogs in this massive machine. We need to know what path this huge machine is taking and where do I fit in that, in that machine? Or what role do I want to play in that machine? A lot of people are saying things like, you know, all these things that are happening are signs of the end of time. And, and a lot of the things that are happening, this new technology and things are all bad and negative things. Yeah, it's definitely possible that we are living in the, in the end times. But remember that every action is judged by its intention. So on that note, I'm ending video seven. I would really love to know what some of your thoughts are on change, on the direction that the world is taking, and where you feel that you fit in the way things are moving.